Hi, this is a tutorial that will help you create an infographic. The first thing you need to know is what an infographic actually is. And basically, it would be like taking a two or three page paper and condensing it down into pictures and words so that people can get all of the same information that they would have out of reading your paper in a short, easy way. If you look at the screen, this is an infographic on how much prom costs. And there are statistics, and there are pictures, and then as we scroll down, there's even a graphic that's by state how much people pay. Let's just say I'm glad that we don't live in the Northeast. Okay, and then what's really nice at the bottom of an infographic is where you cite your sources. And you can see that they just have a source line here and they've just copied and pasted the URLs. That's going to be up to your teacher for how they want you to uh, go about citing your sources for this. But typically on an infographic that you see, there's where they'll be. Step one of creating your infographic would be to open PowerPoint on a PC or a Mac. I am using a PC right now, so my toolbars will all be PC related. Pardon my phone. I apologize. All right, here we go. So we've opened a blank presentation. The first thing you need to do is click on new slide twice. Typically, I use three sides when I create an infographic. You can always use two, you can always use four, but just keep in mind, it might get overwhelming if you use more than four. That's a whole lot of information that somebody needs to get. After you create your three slides, the next thing you need to do is click on the design tab. And over here, you'll see background styles. When you hover over background styles, you're always gonna wanna choose a solid color. If you choose um, a gradient like this, what happens is the pages, as you look at them, you can see the splits between the slides when you turn them into a photo. You don't want to see that. You want it to all look like one background. So you want to make sure that you choose a solid color. You do have more choices than you see right up here. You can do that by going to Format Background, make sure it says Solid Fill, and then right here, if you click on Color, you have these color choices. If none of those float your boat, then you can go down here and click on more colors and you can choose whichever color you want to choose. And then you're going to want to click apply to all so that all of your slides turn the same color and then close that screen. The next thing that you need to do is I'm going to get rid of this information and you're going to want to put everything that you have researched. All right, you're going to want to put a title at the top. You want to make sure that you fill that space. Remember the prom uh, example. You're going to want, to want to make sure that you fill that space with as much information as you can and that it's visually appealing. You don't want a whole lot of dead space in this infographic. This would be an example of what a personal infographic would look like. You'd have your name at the top, again, information about yourself, short bits of information, Obviously, I didn't cite any sources here because it's a personal infographic. An educational infographic looks just a bit different. Here's an example of um, Castro's relationship with Eisenhower during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay, you can see that there's more information on here. And when this student did it, his teacher preferred that the bibliography or the works cited came in a separate form. That's why you don't see any... Um, works cited information down here, okay? But again, pictures and things are separated. You can see the fear of communism, so this whole section of the infographic is about fear of communism. Eisenhower and the Castro face-off, that's all right here. And then the last one is the threat of the missiles to the United States, okay? So it's really easy to come up with three main sections of your infographic and that will help people understand and look at it so that it has some continuity to it instead of there's just random information all over everywhere. Once you have created your infographic and you've put all of your information on all of the different slides, um, you're going to do two things. First of all, you want to make sure that you go to File, Save As, and you want to save it to your home directory, okay? Save it as whatever your teacher asks you to save it 
and you're saving it just like a normal PowerPoint. All right. Once you have saved it, the next thing you're going to do is file, save as again. This time, right here where it says save as type, you're going to hold down that pull down menu and you're going to click on P. N G that's portable network graphics format and you're going to click save I'm gonna put mine on my desktop again you guys are going to save to your home directory make sure you see where you're saving it and that will save you some huge headaches later trying to figure out where it is so I'm gonna click on save and I'm gonna get this message you want to make sure you click on every slide and then OK the next thing that you want to do is open the internet. And I would like you to go to pixlr.com slash express. Pixlr is spelled P-I-X-L-R dot com slash express. When you see this window come up, you need to click on collage. Once you've clicked on collage, you need to click on layout. Now, we used three slides, so you're going to want to pick three boxes. Again, if you used a different number of boxes, then you can pick a different number. You'll go horizontal or vertical, whichever way your teacher has asked you to. We're going to go vertical for right now. You click on the plus sign, and that will take you, um, it will ask you to go choose where you saved your slides. And when you saved your slides as a PNG, what you did was you saved those slides as a picture each slide as an individual picture. So if I go to my desktop, and you're going to want to navigate to where you have your folder. Mine says practice infographic. I have no idea what's on here. Oh, SpongeBob, terrific. Okay, so what happens is, the slides that you created before and you saved to your home directory, when you save them as a PNG, I told you that it saved them as a picture. It did. It'll say slide one, slide two, and slide three. They will be in a folder that's titled whatever it was you called it. Okay, so if you're looking for it, you're looking for a folder, not an individual picture on the outside of a folder that says slide one, slide two, slide three. I hope that makes sense because as it's coming out of my mouth, it sounds pretty convoluted, but I think you'll figure it out. What you do once you open that folder is you double tap on slide one, hit the plus sign, same thing for slide two, hit the plus sign, same thing for slide three, okay? Now, this doesn't look like a good infographic because there's white all over it, white lines, it's not one fluid document, and of course there's hardly anything on it. You don't want the dead space when you're looking at an infographic, okay? To get rid of the white lines, you come down to spacing and move spacing out to zero, and you'll notice that once I've moved spacing to zero, I don't have those lines anymore, okay? Now, poor SpongeBob is part, partly cut off, okay? Your proportions is going to take care of that. If you move your proportions to make your document a little bit wider, that's fantastic. If you move them to make them too wide, then it looks ridiculous. So make sure that you just move them far enough, the proportions far enough, so that whatever you have on either side of your document is not cut off and that you can see it all. Once you've accomplished this, you marvel at how fabulous you are and you hit finished. Once you've hit finished, you'll go over here to save, which is a little bit cut off, but you can see where it is, and you'll click on save. Now the default name that it saves as is always collage. Yes, that word is collage, not college, it's collage. Anyway, um, make sure that you rename it with whatever your teacher tells you. And always, always bump the quality up to 100%. Okay? You'll notice that even at 100%, this is not a big file. Because again, you've created a picture. What's awesome about this is that once you hit save, and you tell it where you want to save it, this now has become a picture. So that's all it is. It's like a picture that you would take with your cell phone 
you can put it on Facebook, you could put it on a blog, you could put it on a website, you could make it a QR code, whatever it is that you would want to do, that has now become a picture. Um, again, you can attach it to Edmodo and you can also dump it into your Google, your Hutch Docs Google Drive account. So, that is how you create an infographic. Um, it feels like I talked really fast all the way through this. I'm so glad there's a pause button and I know that your teacher is fantastic and whatever questions you have, they will be able to clear that up for you. Have a great day.